interesting age um, because this is the guys that usually tell you uh, how what you're doing or how to do it. Uh, the 16 year old, they, they have just enough information from watching telly or listening to their dad that they think they can um, kind of run the session. So uh, you can usually find a way that you'll, you'll trick them up. But, um, but, it's, it's, but I'd still like to involve those guys let their knowledge come through and then kind of use it in a more positive way. It's so easy when we have players like that that we can turn around and, and we want to show them that we know more, we try and put them in the box, you know. So um, making sure we still encourage those guys. This is also the age where we get the real big guys. The, the, sometimes these guys just share a massive growth spurt and the little guys get left behind a little bit. So um, again, what, as what I said in the last group, get the big guys, give them some responsibility, let them work with the, the smaller guys and, and help build their, um, their confidence. If we've nailed off our body shape, as I mentioned in the, in the previous age group, if we've nailed off the body shape side of things, then our small guys should have a little bit of confidence when they get into this age. Because that body shape is what's gonna, it's gonna protect them in the long run by being able to keep their feet under them and keep themselves moving. Um, now, I've, you've got here that I like to add a bit of pressure in their skills and drills development. And that's simple pressure with time, space, and intensity. Um, the easiest one can be just simply raising your voice or just changing the tone of how you're talking through an activity. It's not a physical pressure, but it's a pressure that can, can, can clam some kids up. But it's, you need to experiment with that and see how far you can go. I don't, I don't mean screaming at them and swearing at them, but I mean just raising the intensity of the voice bring a little bit of excitement into your voice as opposed to um, just having it quite monotone the whole time as if I hear we go through the same sort of thing. So that's a simple way of doing it. Everybody will know about, um, you can bring a stopwatch out, you can have competitions, you can have races. If anybody read my blog about um, winning the race, um, it, it kind of talks about how, we, how by creating a race environment in your team can actually lead to a, a especially now that you're looking at being more competitive, having a race environment and building a competition within your team can actually help them transfer that then against the opposition when you start playing your games. Um, so if you have a look at, um, I always talk about the race, talk about the race forever. Um, winning a race is a vital part and it will bring, just by using those terms, it's quite a good way just to add intensity like that. Players, kids still want to get into it and really have a good crack. Um, I talk, I've got also here about uh, vision and decision, which I, again, I just mentioned to you. But the next one I have down here, the last point in focus points I've got about in, enforced team values and standards. If you want to have a good team, they have to be a good team of people. They have to be good amongst themselves. So that means there are rules, you know. You know, little Billy leaves his boots behind three trainings in a row. Well, you know, what are we going to do about that, Billy? You know, being on time is important understanding how you do things. Little wee things, but don't have to necessarily always be your values and standards. Let the players um, have their input as well. Um, particularly now, like it was a long time ago since I was 16, fellas. So, you know, I've lost track of a few things, you know, so I might have to put up with guys sitting there before they start with their ear earphones in. I might be able to have to put up with guys that wear a cap at training, you know, um, because if that's what they want, that's what they want long as it doesn't interfere with anything that you're trying to do. But it's a great time because remember, we're also in charge of these young people, boys and girls. Um, we're, in, we're, they're in, we're in charge of helping them develop as people as well, because that's the difference in our sport with so many other sports out there. You know, we want our, our players to be respectful to the opposition. It's still ruthless, but respectful of the opposition. We want them to understand things like picking up after themselves all these little rules and stuff. I know as a skills coach, it's got absolutely nothing to do with skills, but it's got a lot to do with building your team culture. And, and a lot of that also comes down from how uh, us as coaches carry ourselves. Being prepared is the best thing you can show. Being prepared by if there are cones or whatever to be set up, they're there. You know, if there's some regular activity that you do pre-training, post-training, it's always done. You know, and that's some of the best advice, some of the best coaches have always been given to me is in making sure there's a consistency in what we do and a consistency in our messaging. Um, honesty is the best policy in my opinion. Okay, um, 
but when, with honesty comes the flip side of that is um are you can you can you handle the truth as they say you know so you must the, the players must be willing and have trust the trust goes both ways that you're going to give them the real message and they're going to they're going to re reciprocate when they talk to you okay so this is what um it looks like for the 16s on my little graph um so as you see, and I've got a, the game-based element is still there, and I'd ramp up the intensity of these games, short and sharp, really hard, and um, I've got there to disguise the fitness component as well, um, because I'm not a big fan of having a. We don't, as coaches, we're always going to be time poor, so you don't want to be wasting if you, if you've got a session for an hour or an hour and a half or 40 minutes or whatever it is, you don't want to waste all of that with them running around the field or doing something like that where you can throw a ball at them, create a game, get the whistle out, get them running around, get the intensity going really early, and, um, and they're getting fit like that. They're getting match fit, I guess, in, in some ways. Um, with our drills, we might focus on the, um, certain skills. So um, making sure that, um, that we just amp up a little pressure. So, so that might be uh, our passing under pressure, for example. It might be our ball carry with, with obstacles coming at us fairly hard. Um, and then when we do our, um, our, our, our skills, we add that tactical side of it. So that might be teaching a kick pass. It, it could mean a different, different delivery off a line out. Could be uh, how a number eight might pick and, and find some space. So, or circle ball activity for a back, switch passes and things like that. So we can really amp those things up, to, up as well. Um, and then we can bring them into their, um, I've got a bit of a mini unit session there. Now all scrum, at this age, all scrum coaches will never have enough time. Um, I've never known one that's had enough time yet. And sometimes the backs will trundle off to the corner, they'll run a couple of strikes and then they're waiting for the forwards. Um, that can't be avoided, unfortunately, because um, the, um, the back coaches, they want their time still. So what we have to be, be careful of there is um, we can, at this age, you might start to structure things a little bit differently and you might start having um, more guys uh, another day, for example, or you might have the forwards might come in a little bit earlier or a little bit later or whatnot like that just to fit that side of it in because it is important because there's a lot of safety aspects to, uh, to be covered um, body shape body height all that sort of stuff so instead of making it that one unit is working really hard and the other units kind of just standing around uh, because i've been a backs coach and a backs coaches we i prefer the, a back block to be quite short and intense would have lots of but lots of different activities i'm not a big fan of just running moves all day um, because to me, it's not relevant. We're better off doing three on twos, two on uh, fours, you know, one on ones. Those are activities, are better activities that we can be doing as backs and learning running lines and things like that, as, as opposed to running the same strike over 20 or 30 times, where you should be able to nail it in two. Um, and talking about things like strike plays and things like that, it's a waste of time having a beautiful strike play on a piece of paper. If the players can't catch, they can't pass or their body height is poor that they're going to go into contact and get turned over quickly. So, you know, this age group is a good time where you can throw a couple at them um, to experiment, see how they go, but make sure you have that strong skill base behind it or else, or else you'll get frustrated and so will they. Okay, so just a word of warning on that one there. Um, I talk a little bit more about tactical and I'm and here I'm more, more about, you know, two phase patterns of play and things like that. Now. People who know me know that I, I refer to our attack as being strike to score as opposed to strike to set up. Um, and I think at this age too, I, I like that at every age, but at this age, it's a good way to keep pushing down that channel of thought because it's all about scoring tries at the end of the day and it's about having fun and expressing ourselves. So if we get too predictable with our let's sit to the middle, go around the corner once and, and then we'll do something else. I think if we focus too much on that, we take away that flair and that individuality from our group, and we could actually um, stifle their play. I'm not saying don't do it, fellas. I'm not saying don't do it, but making sure there's a time and a place and it doesn't become the pure focus of your training. 
I'll give you an example where two times recently I've made the mistake of uh, running a 1331, I think it was, yeah, something similar to that anyhow, and spent half the training just getting the guys going where they did. And yeah, that was good, but we didn't, it didn't really bite home. I still had to do it, don't, don't get me wrong, but I would now push it away to a clarity session or something like that and make it its own little thing, as opposed to being something I just try and squeeze into the training. So, um, so we, we, we were a great team and with um, some professional teams that I've been with in the past, um, I, f I find that um, they're really good at doing the one three three one, but they don't actually go anywhere. Um, now I, I know, I know, because um, I can see uh, George here is one of the players who, and from when we were in Connacht, who we ran a two four two pattern there, but we were bloody good at it because we um, we didn't make it our pure focus. We allowed a lot of variation and 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 bits and pieces to happen off that. And if we broke the line, all bets were off, and we were playing footy. So make you know those are the sort of messaging because I know there's a lot of talk out there about about these patterns. And at a 16 year old, uh, yeah, do you need it? I'm I'm not sure of the answer there. Maybe some of you guys can answer that for me. What it does give you, it might win you a championship, but it might not necessarily develop your players, if that makes sense. You know, you'll have the best robots in town. But they might not go on and play a high level of rugby because uh, they'll get found out when things change. Um, and that's why, if you have a look in, in my, what I've got up here in the um, game based thing, use games to randomize skill development. So have the unusual. Um, simple one is what a lot of coaches have done and will continue to do is just throw a second ball in there. You know, just randomize things. Don't let our players just fall into that robotic side of life because it would be terrible to have these 16 year olds robots who then go on and become 18 year olds who, who can't handle it when the pressure comes on so have your straight have your structure but but allow the players to express themselves i can't emphasize that enough